Nikki Toscano. You're the showrunner for the limited series, The Offer, which tells the story of the drama behind the scenes during the making of The Godfather from the point of view of producer Albert Ruddy. Uh, now, Ruddy was the man calling a lot of the shots, trying to facilitate everyone's work on the film. So in a way, you're kind of a showrunner telling the story of a showrunner. Uh, did, did it feel meta for you at all as you were making it? Or or do you feel like your role and, and Albert Ruddy's role uh, were very different, like uh, obviously the mob notwithstanding. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that it was incredibly meta for everyone on set. I mean, we're shooting on the Paramount lot. We're shooting in on stages where where the Godfather shot. Um, I think that there was an awareness for everyone, you know, uh, myself included, about the responsibility of 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 what that was going to be like, and I think that um, there were was there were a lot of jokes, let's say, um, about the making of the making of the making of, you know, that the that the that the the arguments that we were having about creative integrity versus budget um, that that Ruddy was enduring in his time as the producer of The Godfather were the same were the same things that we were going through. So I think that it was incredibly sort of eye opening to 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 feel the sort of the meta-ness of it all um, at all times. Um, and. You know, what were some of those challenges that Ruddy faced in, in the series that you could especially relate to, uh, you know, as, as a showrunner? Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I think it, that at its core, you know, fighting, fighting for ultimately fighting for your vision. You know, there's a lot of there is a lot of people that have a lot of different opinions and that are dubious about certain stages of production, whether it be from crafting, you know, cr crafting the scripts to to uh, casting choice to um, to production concerns. You know, I think that. Um, I think that at the end of the day, the um, the underlying one of the underlying themes of the offer is that it is worth that fight. You know, what would The Godfather have been if it weren't for Al Pacino or Marlon Brando or um, or Robert Evans or Francis Ford Coppola or Mario Puzo? And I think that um, you know, as we as we navigated the process, I think that. Um, you know, uh, the, the challenges of, of maintaining that, that creative need to, um, to have your vision land on the screen is, is something that we can all relate to. And, and with a project like this, you're, you're telling the story of a lot of, uh, uh, very recognizable people, uh, uh, famous names, also people behind the scenes who aren't as, as recognized. What's that casting process like? Is it, it, is it especially challenging because you're looking for someone who could capture, you know, the essence of a person, uh, you know, can maybe resemble them a little or, you know, what are all the uh, thoughts that go into that? I mean, there were, uh, I mean, there were a lot, a lot of early conversations just about what we were trying to do here. And I think that, I think that you said it, you said it, you said it best and, and which was that we were never looking for anybody that was a direct imitation of that character. It was about finding someone that captured the essence and the soul um, of, of that person. You know, these, these people, particularly people like Al Pacino and Marlon Brando and Francis Ford Coppola, who are such iconic, iconic, um, um, uh, I iconic humans in their, in their, in their own right. And trying to, trying to find a way to, um, to essentially um, capture the the soul of of what was guiding them what was navigating them and you know i think that um you know from early on we you know a, a lot of people because it's the godfather right which is a which is a blessing and a curse in this in the same thing everybody was very excited to to be a part of this project. And so actors that maybe normally wouldn't put themselves on tape or putting themselves on tape. And we were able to see which people were doing just more of the imitation, particularly in the, in the instance of like, let's say Al Pacino and Marlon Brando and which, and, and which people were just capturing like what it must've felt for, you know, Pacino for Marlon Brando um, for Francis Ford Coppola for Mario Puzo for Al Ruddy um, at that time, you know, 
Uh, and you have this property, of course, uh, as you, meant, uh, you mentioned, the blessing and the curse. Like The Godfather is such an iconic uh, film. Uh, and to be telling a story about The Godfather, uh, did that add extra sort of pressure to kind of not only, you know, getting the details right, but also making it really dramatically uh, uh, satisfying? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, it's the thing that pulls you in and the thing that scares you at the same time. It's incredible. It's an incredible responsibility, you know, to be dealing with one of the best, arguably one of the best films of all time. And I think that all of us felt the weight of that responsibility, but also we're so excited to be doing, to be telling the story from this unique perspective. You know, there's been a lot of things that have been put out, you know, whether it be from Robert, Robert Evans' point of view or, or Peter Bart's point of view, Francis Ford Coppola's point of view view. And I think that capturing the Al Ruddy side of this, which was something that, you know, I didn't have a, I didn't have a great awareness of, and this unique story of this man who was not only battling the studio system, but the real life mafia as well. And when there's inherent life and death stakes attached to the, the obstacles that your character is navigating, it's, it's, it's a really unique way to tell a story. And I feel like it's something that anyone can relate to. Uh, and, and having uh, Al Ruddy uh, uh, on board also as, as an executive producer, what was it like working with him on his his own life story? You know, it was it was it was fun as hell. You know, Al Ruddy is a really, really unique man with a ton of swagger and a ton of experience and a ton of stories. And, you know, Michael Tolkien sat down with him very early on and um, and interviewed him. And we've got, you know, probably about a hundred and forty pages of single space transcripts about various obstacles he encountered in the making of the film, the the personal things that he was going through, um, you know, at that time. And he was, he was just a, he was a wonderful resource. He was always open. He was watching cuts. He was telling us when things, you know, didn't feel genuine and or, or authentic. Um, and, um, and he's just, he's just a hoot to have around and, and a great character to be basing a series on because, because he's so unique. Uh, one of the interesting things I noticed is that, like, you have worked with Al Pacino before. You uh, were uh, the producer on uh, on Hunters uh, a couple of years ago, and now you're making a series where you're actually portraying Al Pacino uh, earlier in his life. What, what's what's that like? I mean, that must have contributed to the extra meta uh, sense that you were having. Absolutely. And we had, you know, we had heard on, you know, on Hunters, Al Pacino is a wonderful man and an amazing storyteller. So I had heard some of these stories prior to signing up to to do the offer. And we cast Anthony Ippolito, who gave just a, a wonderful, wonderful performance. And I remember being on set that day and I was rewriting some kind of scene and not really paying attention, but I had my I had my you know headphones on and they were starting to rehearse the scene and I heard his voice and it was chilling and eerie because I had spent so much time with the man on Hunters and um and I felt um I guess gratified that you know that that we cast someone that was so you know eerily you know eerily um capturing you know the essence of who Pacino was um because he's just truly, truly extraordinary. Um, it was it was a wonderful experience, you know, working with him on Hunters and then being able to try, you know, attempt in our best, you know, in our best way to to capture him in the offer. Um, and, you know, one of the uh, themes in the uh, series uh, is, is sort of this clash between, you know, the commerce side of Hollywood and the artistic side. Um, and, you know, it feels at certain times like, you know, with, you know, superhero movies and, and like all this sort of stuff, like it feels like the commerce has won out in a lot of ways. Like, do you feel like the Barry Lapidus's are more in control of Hollywood and there aren't as many Robert Evans's? Um, well, I mean, I think that there's, a, you know, there's certain there's certainly a parallel between what was happening in the early 70s, you know, to today with, you know, big business having a having a stake in in movie making and TV making, you know, across the board. And I think that at the end of the day, the thing that everyone should be left with is that it is worth it to fight for the godfathers of the world, the marathon mans, the Chinatowns, the you know, uh, extraordinary, you know, extraordinary um, filmmakers 
coming to the mat and delivering their vision. And I think that at the end of the day, the moral of the story is, you know, is, is trust the creative and, and allow for, um, allow for them to put, put forth their vision so that, so that, so that we as a collective world are not missing out on something, something greater. Well, uh, congratulations on the offer um, and and your work on the series uh, on Paramount Plus, uh, where people can also watch The Godfather. So it's like a great one-two punch. Um, And thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.